Lesson four, shapes and randomization. In this lesson, we'll learn about using uh, shapes, using the x, y values, the width and height, as well as using random numbers to change uh, different values. So in exercise two, we've got these rectangular blocks. Uh, we've got a blue and a red. Um, it's starting out with a longer blue and a shorter red, but we're supposed to look at the code and try to figure out how the last two inputs in the rect line of code work. So we'll see here, these two is what we want to make it look like at the end with a shorter blue and a longer red. So we'll need to figure out how those work, see how these numbers work, and then we'll change the numbers to make the red rectangle longer than the blue one. So we've got our x value and our y value. If we turn our grid on, you'll see that the blue is drawn from 100 for the x and 100 for the y. And then the next values here, where the 100 and the 200 are going to be the width, so it's 100 wide, and the height, 200 pixels high. So now we'll go over to the second rectangle, which is saying fill red, and then it's creating a rectangle at 250 over for the x and 100 down for the y. And then the last two values are showing 100 wide and 150 high. So if we change this to 250, it should pull us all the way down to here, which will make it longer than the blue one, which was only 200. So we'll go down to the red rectangle line and put in 250, and that should lengthen it. And now the red one is longer than the blue. Now if we continue to the next one, let's go ahead and run the code as is. See it's got a green ellipse starting at 200, 200, which is going to be the center. We'll turn our grid on. And it's going to be 200 wide and 150 high, as shown by these two numbers here. So now we want to make an orange ellipse behind the green one. So if we need the orange one behind the green one, that means we have to draw the orange one first in order. So we'll grab a block of code, says fill yellow. We'll go ahead and change that to fill orange, so we can just type that in. And then we'll grab an ellipse from the drawing blocks and put it just underneath the orange. And we can start at the same spot, 200, 200 for the X and Y. Now the width and the height, we don't want it to be 400 wide where it's gonna go all the way from side to side and 400 high where it's gonna to go top to bottom. So looking at this picture here, it looks like it might be, oh, maybe 300 wide and maybe 350 high. So let's try, let's try that. 300 by 350. And that gives us a fairly close, uh, not, it's not quite exact. So we could actually maybe make this a little bit smaller, maybe 250 wide. So that'll give us just a little bit less width here. Now it looks a little bit closer. So for this one, it says it doesn't have to be perfect uh, as long as the green is ellipse is inside the orange one, but that looks pretty close. So for exercise four, um, it says sometimes we only want to fill the entire screen with color. For that, you can use a background. It covers everything on the screen with the color you choose. So we've got here, it says fill color purple. Um, and then it's got a rectangle, then it says background yellow, fill blue, and a rectangle. So let's go ahead and run this code and see what happens. So we're not seeing this purple anywhere, um, but we are seeing a background yellow. And then we're also seeing this fill blue, which fills a rectangle at 250, 250, with a width of 100 and a height of 100. So the question is here, why is the purple rectangle not showing up? Well, as you uh, have seen before, this code runs in order. So it draws a purple rectangle and then it draws the background. So that's why the purple is not showing up. So the two things we need to do is um, we'll need to change the background from yellow to orange. So we'll click down here on background yellow, change it to orange. And then we'll need to make sure the purple square 
is shown on the screen. So it says, can you change the order of the code so you can see both the purple and the blue squares? So let's go ahead and do that. If we just bring the purple down, fill purple to the bottom, and then bring its corresponding rectangle down with it, and then we can run the code, and they're both showing up like they should be. Okay, on the next line of on the next exercise, we'll need to go ahead and draw a black background with a green ellipse on top of it. Uh, it says use the background to make it black. So that shouldn't be too hard. Let's go ahead and run it. We've got a green ellipse, and here are the x and y coordinates, and then the width and height. Then we can go ahead and do a background color. So background color should go before the ellipse because we want it to be drawn before the ellipse is drawn. So we'll change the background to black and then run the code. And we've got that there. So if we move to exercise six, we've got this, this uh, picture over here with it looks like a sun in the sky and some green grass. So we want to debug the program and correct the error so the grass extends across the entire bottom. So if I run this, you see the grass is only going halfway. So it says you only have to change one number. Which parameter makes your rectangle, the grass, wider? Well, we've got, looks like a green rectangle here. And the rectangle width looks like it's 200. And we want it to go, the width to be all the way across. So we want the width to be 400. So if we look over at our code, we can see where our grass here, here's some comments, draw grass, fill green, it gives us our x and y coordinate, it gives us our width, which is 200, but we want to change that to 400 so it'll stretch all the way across the canvas, and then our height is 100, which is fine. So if we reset it and run it, then we've got the picture just like in the side. Now on exercise seven, let's go ahead and run it real quick to see the difference. We've got this cloud that looks like it's uh, rotated in the wrong direction compared to this picture here. So let's go ahead and fix that. So it says debug this program to make the cloud wider than it is tall, like in the image. And it says you'll need to change two parameters. Which ones set your cloud's width and height? Well, if we look over at the code, we've got our cloud down here. It says draw a cloud for the comments, and then fill white, and then we've got an ellipse with an X position of 150, do right here, 150, and a Y of 100. So 150 over, 100 down is where it starts it. So now it says we need to change two parameters. If we look over here, we've got a width of 100 and a height of 200. So 100 wide and 200 high. So if we switch those around and make it 200 wide, down here, and then 100 high. That should make it go across this way, and then just a short uh, distance for the height. So let's reset this and run it, and it looks just like pictures. We can finish that and move on to exercise eight. So for exercise, um, so exercise eight just gives us a little explanation about how to use these blocks and parameters and which inputs they have, but we've already covered those. Let's move on to number nine. Uh, we've got our random number block of code, and that is in the math section. So you can switch back and forth to use your different blocks. So let's go ahead and run this. And we've got um, the background color tomato. The fill color is orange for an ellipse. And the ellipse is showing up at a random number from 0 to 400 for the x value. The y value is always 200, so the y value will always be across this middle here. And then the width is 50 and the height is 50 for that ellipse or circle here. So if we reset it, each time it runs, it's a random number for the x, but it's always going to be in the middle for the y. Now we can continue to the next one. Number 10, uh, we've got, it's asking us to use a random number for the y parameter, so the circle will be drawn in a y position as well. So now we want a circle that's appearing at random x and y positions. So we'll just go ahead and go to math here, the math menu, grab random number, 
drag it to the Y spot. And now we can say zero for the minimum and 400 for the maximum. And now the Y position will be anywhere from the top to bottom. And the X position, as we've already seen from the last one, is already set to anywhere from zero to 400, a random number. So if we run this, each time we run it, it shows up in a different spot on the screen from 0 to 400 for the X and 0 to 400 of the Y. All right, number 11. Okay, we've got this rainbow snake here. Okay, it's starting with three circles, but we need to have six total. So we need to run the program a few times to see how the work, code works. It looks like they're... X position is staying the same, but the Y is shifting a little bit up and down each time for each of these circles. So we're going to add at least three new different colored circles to the rainbow and use random number to make the rest of the snake's body move up and down like the first three. So let's go ahead and look at these. We've got a red, red colored ellipse, X position between 190 and 210, or sorry, X position is 100, Y position is between 190 and 210 and the width and height is 50. For the next one, the orange one, the X position is 40 more than the first one. So the first one started 100, the next X position is 140, then the next one on yellow is 180. So it looks like the X position is going up by 40 each time and the Y position is staying as a random number between 190 and 210. So we can go ahead and have three more of these uh, circles or ellipses. So we're going to go fill color, drop this down, and it's okay that these are connected together. They just separate them to make it easier to to uh, read the code. But it looks like after yellow we've got a green, so I'm just going to type in green, and then I'm going to grab our ellipse code and drop it below, and we're going to do the same thing with the math. We're going to bring a random number for the Y, and the Y is going to be between 190 and 210. And then we've got the width should be 50, the height should be 50. And we've got, like I said, we're going up on the X value by 40 each time, because it's moving 40 over each time. So we have 100, then 140, 180, and then we'll go to 20. Now, this is going to take a little bit longer if we do it the way we've been doing it, which is dragging the blocks over and over. We can also copy it. I can click show text, go back to the text. I'm going to copy, I'm going to copy three of the, no, I'm going to copy two. We've got one, two, three, four. So we need two more. So I'm going to copy two more. Control C and then Control V to paste. And now I actually have one, two, three, four, five, six, but I will need to change the color on a couple of these. And I'll space these out and make it a little bit easier to read. Okay, so we've got orange, yellow, green, red, orange, yellow, green. Okay, so we've got 180, 220. Let's just show the blocks again. Look at that big box and make it easier. Okay, so we've got green, and then we'll change this one to blue. And we'll also, we have the value of X was 220, so the next one's going to be 40 more, so 260. And then the last one, we've got a purple, purple red, purple ellipse, and then we'll make it 260 plus 40 is 300. And we saw those random number values, which are the same for the Y position. And then the width and height is 50 for all of them as well. So if we run this a few times, we'll see that the snake is randomly moving between a Y position of 190 and 210 for each of these circles, and each of them independently picking a random number. And that is it for lesson four.